welcome back to vlog number 29 and uh, I'm sure that you probably noticed that there's something a little different today and that is uh, my wife Yvette has decided she's going to take a little bit of a break from doing uh, videos and vlogs with me. So there's a number of reasons for it but one of the things is in particular is she's rather do things like outtakes and sort of like on-scene reporting and things of that nature and leave the vlog stuff up to me uh, in terms of doing the reporting like this. Um, so you will be seeing her. She'll be in clips as, as the vlogs go on because we're, we are a little bit behind so I don't have clips of her doing that kind of thing for the vlogs we're doing now. So once we get caught up and we start getting the most recent ones uh, out there, you'll start to see her again. So today we're gonna talk about how we uh, got from Bandelier uh, up to Heron Lake. Uh, needless to say, when we left uh, Bandelier, we went up through an area called Abiquiu Lake. It wasn't to our liking, I'm not gonna go into it. We just pressed on, we had the time, and we went all the way to a place called Heron Lake State Park in New Mexico. Now, one of the things I want to mention about Heron Lake, because you've heard, heard me talk about state parks before, whether there's New Mexico or Colorado. Um, normally, we get into a state park, there are a lot of things you look forward to, but this state park was really great. We had great spaces to park into. They were separated, they were private. Uh, they were really, the spaces themselves were fairly deep. So, uh, you know, the different loops that they had there, some were shallow, some were deep, but the deep ones were really deep. If we had a 60 foot uh, motor home, uh, we'd still have plenty of room to spare in the one that we parked in. It was uh, to the point where we could back the trailer all the way up. We disconnected the trailer, turned the rig uh, sideways a little bit and made ourselves a little nice private area. Did a lot of cooking there. Uh, we, it was still a time where we could still have uh, campfires. So we cooked outside quite a bit. And uh, Yvette even put her hummingbird feeder out there and got a bunch of hummingbirds to come around. They were already around, but she fed quite a few of them. Um, the, one of the things that we're noticing in this that part of New Mexico and some parts of Colorado is that the lakes that are man-made depending on when they were made, and they don't have to be that long ago, but the Army Corps of Engineers or the engineers that uh, designed these lakes and built these lakes use data that they collect about rainfall, and that gives them an idea about how many cubic feet of water that they're gonna get as runoff and streams and all this, and they make all these calculations, and that's how they decide how big, how deep, how broad, how wide these lakes will be designed. Well, there, there's a lot of lakes around that we've seen that we've been told that the data that was used to create these lakes was uh, taken from such a small sample and that sample happened to be a period of time where there was a lot of rainfall, an abnormally a, a lot of rainfall and what ends up happening sometimes or a lot of times is now we get to a lake that if you have a year that's even the least bit behind on the rainfall, it looks like it hasn't rained in years. And that is that the lake is half full or a quarter full. So sometimes you see these lakes and there's the banks go down forever, hundreds and hundreds of feet, or the boat ramps themselves are you know, almost a quarter of a mile long. So it's pretty interesting to see how as cool of an engineering feat some of these man-made lakes are that sometimes uh, even the best laid plans go awry. Uh, at that point Heron Lake uh, uh, you know it was a national park uh, excuse me a state park within the New Mexico system we haven't had a lot of luck with those state parks before but this particular time it was it was a pretty good deal it was very quiet uh, they had great showers uh, and it was very cheap. It was far enough away from town or any major city so when we were in there we went we liked to get off the road over the weekend you know to get away from traffic etc. 
uh, <coughs> it really seemed like even for a weekend it was pretty quiet so we really enjoyed that the the idea of being at heron lake gave us an opportunity to sit there and think about really where we were going to go next sometimes we have a pretty good idea of you know weeks down the road because maybe we're heading to a house sit and we had a house sit plan at this point but it was still pretty far off uh, in Durango so we weren't really worried about it and we weren't pressed for time and and we sort of got an, an impression that we were going to head from this particular uh, area to uh, a place called Navajo Lake that borders on New Mexico and Colorado but we didn't think we were going to go all that way so what to do so we spent the end of our time at Heron Lake State Park finding out that probably the best place to go since we did have a little internet and we could do some research would be a place called the Hickory Apache Nation Reservation which is coming up next in, in vlog number uh, 30. So stick around for that. Uh, it's pretty exciting. I got to tell you, it's probably one of the neatest places uh, that we're going to go to uh, in this adventure so far. So until next time, be safe, take care, and stay tuned. Bye-bye now.